What's up, Seeky Nation? Sneaky B here, back with all the news after week 16 of our Tennessee Titans franchise, where the Titans picked up a huge victory over the Houston Texans. It was a come-from-behind victory, saw Marcus Mariota thrive in the two-minute offense, and he actually could have had a game-winning touchdown to Delaney Walker, who dropped the ball in the end zone. It didn't matter, though. We went to, uh, uh, to overtime, and Mariota led the Titans down the field, eventually finishing the drive with a run into the end zone on his own, and the Titans have improved to 8-7. and seven. They have proven to be a really good home team throughout the season, finishing 7-1. and one. That said, our struggles are on the road. Our defense just does not seem to want to show up in road games, and we are currently 1-6 heading into Week 17 against the Colts. It's definitely going to be a very important game for us. You know, the playoffs are still on the line, believe it or not, with our record. You know, it definitely didn't look like this was going to be a playoff team, but our division has really seemed to struggle so far this year, and it is potentially still an option. We can upgrade some players before ah don't auto upgrade we're good i caught myself it all good uh so we do need to upgrade some players here and i do need to adjust the sliders i meant to do it a little bit last week and forgot to we can go ahead and improve his deep throw accuracy something that should help us out you know we haven't really been able to get those long balls to doyle green beckham lately and that's something that we need in our game you know ever since we changed the sliders around it's been much more difficult to do that and uh, that obviously needs to change quickly. Stafford up here uh, need to improve his awareness. We did have a few injuries in that last game too. Huff right here being one of them. That definitely concerns me. And we're going to have to check out how long he is out for. Because his injury was pretty serious if I remember correctly. So it's definitely something to worry about. Especially again going into another road game. Now the one thing with Huff is it's going to bring in Michael Griffin, a guy who has a little bit more experience and might be better in road game situations. We did see Huff give up some big plays in recent weeks, and that's obviously something we want to avoid. David Cobb also went down with an injury. Another uh, thing that definitely worries me, we'll improve his catching. I definitely seem to, to like throwing the ball to the running backs out of the backfield. Uh, with this offense and it, it's been working out for us greatly we saw Dexter McCluster have a huge game for this team we're going to auto progress everybody else here um, but we definitely have some things we need to look at we also need to look at our players that we want to negotiate with uh, we'll check that out as well before we get into an offseason situation um, wide receivers again still something I kind of want to keep an eye on I've kind of been scouting a little bit of everything and it's worked out for us so far one thing I'm going to say is there are not a whole lot of players in this draft that have really been standing out to me there's players I like um, players that look okay but there's nobody that I'm like I need to have this player at least not yet and the thing with that is if this is going to be a frequent thing you know, it might be a draft where we trade down a lot. And that's unfortunate because I really wanted to get some big playmakers that are going to help this team in the future. Um, but I don't know that I feel really comfortable with a whole lot of players in this draft. There are certain players that I definitely like. Um, but overall, you know, I definitely have a lot of question marks regarding some of the players in this draft. And if I don't see somebody I like and I'm getting uh, trade offers, you know, that's definitely something I'm willing to do. Make moves, you know, pick up more draft picks in the future when we actually have guys that we do feel comfortable with. Uh, so that's something to consider as we move forward. Overall, though, like just scanning through the drafts, I haven't been the most impressed. And that definitely worries me because I was really planning on building through the draft here. And while that might be somewhat of an option, you know, we definitely have a lot of question marks still. And that's something to consider as we move forward. Uh, I see a lot of zone coverages, but these are all cornerbacks. I'd like to see some man coverage there. Uh, we do run zone defense frequently, but I want a guy who's going to be able to lock down a receiver. Part of the reason we haven't been running man defenses is because we don't have a guy that we feel comfortable with doing that. And that's definitely an issue. So obviously Cobb is out which means McCluster and Sankey are fighting for that number one spot. Sankey had a pretty good game last week, um, and I like Sankey more as a running back. However, McCluster's ability to make plays out of the backfield in the receiving game has proven to be incredibly valuable to our offense, and so he is going to stay at that number one spot right now as we move forward. Uh, let's go ahead and check out the injuries here, see what we got. We'll check out the Colts injuries as well. Uh, Huff, a torn bicep, out for five weeks. So even if we do make the playoffs, he will not be available to us, which is a huge blow because this guy has really played well for us. Um, and that's very, very unfortunate. You know, he's made some big plays as you hear sirens in the background. My goodness, hope everything's all right. Um, 
But yeah, Huff's made some big plays. He's also given up big plays, though, and, and that's unfortunate. Uh, David Cobb also out, broken collarbone. Uh, he had a short-lived stint as a starter there. Uh, had a really good week. He really struggled last week. You know, that fourth and one on the goal line, we were really counting on him to kind of bowl some players over, and it wasn't all his fault. You know, our offensive line didn't do him a whole lot of, uh, give him a whole lot of help, but it's definitely something we're worried about. Looking at the standings, we are both eight and seven, us and the Jaguars. Um, I forget what the second tiebreaker is. Um, it might be division record if I'm not mistaken, in which case picking up a win over the Colts could get us into the playoffs. I don't know what the Jaguars record is. I don't even know if that's actually the tiebreaker. Either way, if we win against the Colts, reminder, we're one and six on the road this season and we're playing a division rival. But if we win against the Colts, all of a sudden we could be in the playoffs. The Jaguars could pick up a loss. We can move to nine and seven. They can move to eight and eight. And we could find ourselves in a playoff situation. It's really crazy to think about. Another thing that could potentially happen is if the Colts beat us and the Jaguars lose, maybe the Colts are going to be in the playoffs. Kind of what we expected to see anyway. Um, so a lot of interesting stuff going on this week. It's going to be interesting to see how it plays out again. You know, I wasn't really anticipating a playoff appearance from this Titan team, but we've been doing okay so far. Let's go ahead and check out the Colts, see if they have any injuries here. Um... And Anthony Costanzo is a pretty big hit for them, uh, as well as Alan Branch down here. Dwight Lowry also out. So three, uh, what's, what's up with all their team missing hips, dude? Got a bunch of old guys on that team. I don't know. Uh, a lot of hip injuries there, though. Um, I meant to change the sliders a little bit last week. And uh, again, you know, I want to keep the realism here. And other teams are still just kind of struggling to run the ball against us. I'm going to improve that by five. I'm also going to improve pass coverage by two and defensive reaction time by two. I don't know if that's going to work out or not. Um, everything else I seem I feel pretty comfortable with right now. I think this has really given us realistic stats. I kind of like the feel of the game. There's just a few things I want to adjust here and there. But uh, as we get better players, I also think that's going to reflect. You know, Again, we haven't had a hard schedule at all this season. If you looked at the Titans' schedule, uh, which we'll go ahead and look at it now. I mean... A lot of the teams that we played were right there with talent-wise. You know, the Buccaneers, the Browns, both of those are winnable games. The Colts, we should have lost, we beat. Uh, Bills, you know, they're a pretty solid team, but it is a winnable game. They don't necessarily have a guy at quarterback that's going to guarantee that victory for them. Dolphins, good team, but it is a winnable game. Falcons, another winnable game. Um, I mean, just looking down, there, there's a lot of teams with a lot of question marks. And this has been a pretty easy season for the Titans, which kind of worries me. Um, even if our team gets better, we might regress next season, depending on um, who we play. You know, if our schedule is a little bit more difficult, I don't know. Well, let's go ahead and find out who the Jaguars are playing in Week 17, as that greatly affects how things uh, play out for us, obviously. Uh, so let's find their game. They are playing the Texans, the team we just beat, and it's going to be at Houston. So the Jaguars have put together a better season so far, and we also saw that the Texans have a lot of injuries on offense. Um, but they are at home. They have a very good defense, a lot of playmakers there. And it's going to be interesting to see if Bortles shows up for that game or not. Um, a lot could change in this last week. I'm definitely looking forward to seeing how it works. Um, let's see. Draft stories. And we've already seen that one. We'll check out player of the week. And I meant to do it last week, and I forgot to do that as well. We'll check out the MVP award right now uh, just to see if it changes in the last week. It might not. It could stay the same. It could change. We don't know. And then uh, we'll check out all the stats and all the awards again in the Week 17 news or maybe playoff news, depending on how everything shakes out. I don't know yet. Um, week 16, Players of the Week, Jameis Winston making the list. 26 of 38, three passing touchdowns, uh, eight carries for 29 yards. His teammate, Levante David, with 14 tackles, a sack, and an interception to Quell Jackson for the Colts. 11 tackles, a sack, a fumble forced, and a fumble recovered. And Marcus Mariota is going to make the list. 31 of 41, 354 yards, two passing touchdowns, including that rushing touchdown to win the game in overtime. The number one and number two overall pick representing here in Week 17. And that is uh, something really cool to check out. Yearly awards, again, we'll look at this briefly, see what we got. Russell Wilson leading the way, number one overall right now for that MVP award. Things could obviously change. Uh, it's really kind of weird to see this. We looked at his stats, and he really wasn't having a great season passing the ball. He might be getting a lot done running the ball. 
uh, but still pretty interesting. Obviously, his team record has to come into effect, but then you'd think Drew Brees, who was having a great season, would as well, or Phillip Rivers. I don't know, uh, but here we go. Russell Wilson, number one. Aaron Rodgers, number two. Drew Brees, number three. Tom Brady, four. Tony Romo, five. Phillip Rivers, six. Roethlisberger, seven. Mariota back up on the list up number eight now. Joe Flacco, number nine. And Blake Bortles, number 10. Week 17 is going to be a crazy one, guys. Let me know your predictions on whether or not we find our way into the playoffs. Um... Anything can happen. Who knows? Uh, but thank you so much for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed. Please smash that like button if you did. It helps me out a lot. And I need to negotiate. I forgot to do all this. Let's resign some players. I, I keep doing this. I keep trying to end the video, and then I realize I forgot something. Let's resign players really quick. Um, yeah, we passed on Craig Stevens. He's been having a good season for us. I've really been happy with him. Um, but overall, I feel like he was asking for a little bit too much money. Uh Money definitely comes into a play with this Madden. Uh, so we have to think about all of our signings here. I've been pretty happy with what Sammy Hill's been giving us. Uh, I can't really hate on, on his effort and what he's brought to the table. I don't know that he's going to sign this contract. I do think there's a defensive tackle that I'm pretty interested in um, for the draft. But overall, we'll, we'll try to re-sign him. Um, still negotiate him. I'm, I'm okay with that. We haven't seen a whole lot of Woods. Uh, mostly because I feel like Sammy Hill's been getting the majority of those minutes, which is fine by me. Now, we do have a lot of cap room right now. Zach Brown's a guy I want to bring back. Um, but overall, you know, we have a good middle linebacker right now. And I plan on drafting another. But he is Zach Brown. He's a Tar Heel. He's got a cool name. Um, and he's not asking for a stupid amount of money. Yeah, let's offer him like a two-year deal maybe. Give him a little bit more in the bonus department here, and then we'll lower his salary. You know what? He's probably not going to go for it, but we're trying to... You know, he's getting more with this deal in two years than he would be per year uh, with the five-year deal. I don't know that he's going to go for it. We'll find out. Um, but I wouldn't mind bringing him back in a reserve role. Uh, he's a pretty solid player to have. Uh, Martin... Again, depth issues. You know, absolutely, it'd be nice having him back. Uh, it's a matter of how much we want to pay him. He's really not asking for an extraordinary amount of money here, so I definitely think this is doable. And we'll see if he's going to be okay with that or not. We're giving him what he wants, whether or not the bonus money is there for him. See, they're still negotiating, so I don't know what that means. Charlie Whitehurst will probably move on without. Uh, Massacoy I might move on without as well. Uh, so we'll just kind of have to see how it all plays out with those guys. I don't know if I have to wait a week to find out or what. Um, we're going to have more opportunities to re-sign him, though. Uh, and they all rejected it, but I think they're all still willing to negotiate. So we can always do that in another week. And you know what? We might do that. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you in week 17. Later.